Hi, and welcome to Chamber Chat, a partnership with WIMPEG, Western Oregon University, and the Monmouth Independence Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center, in which our members are featured in hopes of the community getting to know them better both professionally and personally. Joining me now is Barbara Deering, who is the Executive Director of Intercollegiate Athletics here at Western Oregon University. Barb, thanks for being here. Thank you, Jean, for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, I know you're not originally from Monmouth Independence. What made you choose Western Oregon? Why move here? Why take the job at Western? Why live in Monmouth Independence community? Well, number one, it's a great community, and it's a community that fits with me personally. Um, I moved here a decade ago from South Carolina, so thus the accent uh, <laughs> that everyone will hear. That's not going to go away. Uh, to take a job at Portland State University, and I was at Portland State for seven years, uh, trying to um, increase my skill set of which to become an athletic director. And um, when the position at Western Oregon came open, I applied for it, and fortunately, I was the one that was selected. But I selected Western and selected Monmouth because um, I come from a small farming community, grew up on a farm, grew up in a small town, grew up in a town where everybody knew your name and uh, sometimes what you had for breakfast. Um, and Monmouth was just, um, it had all of those qualities. And from the shop owners in town uh, to the gal that gets me my coffee in the morning when I run through the drive through um, it's just a great community in which to live. I would agree, and I honestly don't think you have an accent. I uh, also have been told that I have one, so we'll just ignore that for now. Um, now that you've lived here for a while in, in the Monmouth Independence, Polk County, um, what would you say is one of the unique features about this area? Well, another reason why I did move to Oregon was for sustainability and quality of life. And uh, Polk County and the Monmouth Independence, you know, area and sur you know surrounding communities, they practice that uh, sustainability. And it's not about the things that you have, but it's about the relationships and the people, uh, and the camaraderie and the pride that you have in your communities. And that's what I say that Monmouth and Independence have is they have tremendous pride, you know, in the community, and everybody works together for the common good. I would agree with that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more, as the Executive Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, <coughs> aka the Athletics Director, what all does that actually entail? What do you do? <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of people ask me that uh, over the years, uh, but the simple uh, answer that I give everyone is some days I think I'm a fire chief. I put on my hat and I have my hose in my hand and I, I put out fires that day. <laughs> uh, and, and the fires could range from uh, didn't um, you know, get my travel request in, you know, in time, can you help me out, you know, in getting that, to going in and uh, talking with the teams, uh, to sitting down and uh, providing some uh, what I call resource information for our head coaches. When they come up with a situation, they come in and they say, Barbie, have you ever had to deal with this before? You know, what are your thoughts? How do you think we should handle this? Mm -hmm. um, to sitting down and doing budgets, uh, to moving complete teams all the way across the country, uh, to sitting down and doing compliance. Are we dotting the I's and crossing the T's as far as the NCAA bylaws go? So we were looking at some photos here. Uh, I know some of these are taken at the <coughs> athletics auction that you have every year. There's some of you chatting with some of the coaches and others. Um, you have an, a, an annual Wolves athletic auction mm -hmm. that's in Salem, I believe, at the convention center, Correct. where it has been for the previous few years. Um, it's a huge fund run fundraiser, obviously, for athletics. How many sporting teams are there here at Western? We have 13 NCAA Division II uh, teams. And um, the athletics auction uh, is the primary support mechanism that we use or event each year that we have to support our scholarships. 100% of the proceeds uh, from that auction benefit student athlete scholarships for each year. And our sports on the men's side is baseball, uh, men's basketball, football, um, men's cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field. On the women's side, it's women's basketball, women's soccer, women's softball, women's cross country, indoor, outdoor track and field, and uh, women's volleyball. We have about 325 student athletes. They come from all regions uh, in the state and the other heavily recruited area 
uh, is the state of Washington and Northern California. And we have a few from Idaho and a few from Wyoming and Nevada. Uh, but that's predominantly our recruiting reach at this point in time. And we're filming this now in early December. This year's football season was exciting with um, quite an upset or a win at least against uh, Northern Alabama, I believe. Because um, at that time they were ranked fourth, maybe? They were ranked sixth in the sixth, country okay. at that point in time. And the newspapers and the clippings and the blogs have referred to it as the miracle in Monmouth, <laughs> uh, in that uh, an upstart team, i.e., the Western Oregon Wolves, took on a perennial uh, postseason team, a perennial top 25 team. They've been ranked in the top 25 for at least the last decade. Um, you know, brought them to Monmouth and not only brought them here, got the game here, actually ended up beating them. Um, so that was a tremendous boost for our football program and a lot of pride for our students, uh, you know, to have. Men's basketball is off to its first ever 7-0 and start. I, in, I saw that post on school, Facebook yesterday. <laughs> in school history, they moved up um, Tuesday in the national rankings from number 10 to number 4 in the country of all Division II uh, schools, and they are now the number one ranked team in the West region. That is the first time that that's ever happened um, in school history. So it's tremendous uh, positive uh, things that are happening here with our teams. Uh, again, community pride, school pride. You know, we're trying to do things to where the community will get behind us and be proud that they're from Monmouth and Independence mm -hmm. and that Western Oregon University is here in the community and they want to get behind it and they want to support it. Right. Now, as someone who loves basketball, I'm excited for the men's team. And I've watched some of the women's games as well. And Correct. Um, in sports in general. So it, it's, it's, I enjoy having Western Oregon in the backyard, if you will, of living here and the sporting element that that brings to the community. And it is exciting when the community gets behind and you hear people chattering about it and they mm -hmm. talk about it and that's exciting yeah. um, for our community, I believe. Yeah. And what's even more exciting for me, and it's one of the tenets that we try to teach or pass on uh, to the student athletes and try to model it, is community service. Our student athletes this fall have put in over 1,500 hours of community service already from going to the elementary schools and helping them with their uh, field days to reading to them to uh, going to the library, going to the senior citizen centers, uh, you know, and sitting down and playing games and interacting, you know, with the senior citizens to helping plant the trees that you see here, you know, in Monmouth. Um, to uh, doing jogathons, you know, with uh, the local uh, youth sports teams, uh, to holding free clinics for them. Um, we're trying to teach them to be the citizen leader and uh, learn these skills of, of being part of your community, give back to your community, of your time and your talents, so that wherever they end up living, they already understand what the model is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. Uh, as a student athlete, they get to have that experience. It's not just about the practice and the games, but the community involvement as well. So that's great that Western um, encourages it and makes it happen as well. We so. try to provide those opportunities <laughs> for them. So if, if you're listening to this and you have a potential community service opportunity, please reach out to me and uh, we'll try to get some student athletes there to help you. Um, take note of that. <laughs> so thank you very much. Now, uh, real quickly, um, what would you say has been one of your greatest professional accomplishments? Uh, professionally, uh, without a doubt, um, I spent basically 30 years preparing for this position of being an athletic director. And I was very choosy as to what type of school I wanted to be an athletic director. Uh, and Western Oregon, to me, professionally, is the culmination of, of everything that I've done professionally. It's, I have my dream job at my dream school, and I literally can say I'm living the dream every day. <laughs> now, my favorite question that I get to ask um, with the time that we have left, what is a hobby, a skill, or an interest that you have that would surprise people? Um, I think what would surprise people is uh, uh, the fact that I, I love the fine arts, and at 18, when I went away to college, uh, being the first member for my family to do so. I was exposed in a college orientation class uh, to opera. I had never seen opera until that point in time. And I fell in love with it, fell in love with um, performing arts, and um, I, 
most people probably do not know that about me. The other uh, characteristic and talent um, and hobby is I like to bass fish. Now I understand <laughs> that that's the wrong type of species to be fishing for in the Northwest. Uh, I'm learning to uh, transition into salmon fishing, uh, but a lot of people feel that those are diametrically opposed you know, hobbies um, in that, oh, well, you bass fish and you like opera, um, but that's me and both of them are passions. Well, that's exciting. So, Barb, um, I've enjoyed having you here. I think it's wonderful what's happening with the sporting teams in general, specifically, obviously, with men's basketball right now. Um, congratulations on the successes there, and congratulations on getting your dream job and living the dream. Absolutely, and Jean, I appreciate you having me here today. Yeah. Hi, and welcome back to Chamber Chat. Joining me now is David Roberts, who is the Senior Marketing Services Manager with Goodwill Industries of the Columbia Willamette. Thank you, David, for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, um, obviously, I have the Southern accent. I'm originally from North yep. Carolina. You have your own accent. Please tell us originally where you're from and then how you came to Oregon, please. I do have an accent, uh, but it is not Australia, which is a lot of people think. I get approached on a daily basis asking me where I'm from in Australia. I am not. <laughs> Uh, I'm originally from Manchester, England. I moved here with, uh, with my wife 12 years ago. She is the brains of the Roberts family. She uh, got a PhD in December 2003 and was approached by the University of Cincinnati to take up a position there. So at the time, we didn't have any children and we decided to take the plunge and, and move across the pond. So we sold everything that, that we owned and moved to Cincinnati. We were there for four and a half years and then my wife got headhunted again uh, for another job, this time at Oregon Health and Sciences University. Uh, so we moved again. It was too good an opportunity to turn down and uh, we've been here ever since. So May 4th, 2016, we'll have been here 12 years, but I've not lost my accent. <laughs> well, that's okay. I like it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it does not sound like Australian. So. Good. <laughs> Now, um, you're um, here representing Goodwill, yep. and specifically we'll talk a little bit more about the Job Connections program, because that's what I want our community to mm -hmm. hear more. Uh, but tell us a little bit about Goodwill in general. I know your office is in Portland, but obviously there's a lot of outreach throughout the state. I want to hear more about Polk County. So tell us more about what your role is with Goodwill and then how that impacts Polk County. Absolutely. So I have been privileged to now work for Goodwill Industries of the Columbia Willamette for just short of uh, two years now. And I am the Senior Marketing Services Manager, which essentially means I run the marketing department. So I have a Creative Services Manager, a PR Manager, a Communications Manager, and a Marketing Assistant who all report into me. All that wonderful signage that you see uh, in the stores, all the truck wraps that you see, uh, everything that you see on our Facebook page, the websites, et cetera, uh, all the marketing materials that we help all our programs with, that all comes out of the marketing department. So really the impact that we're having across, uh, across the Columbia Willamette now, and specifically Polk County, is that we, uh, we have three st two stores here. I, I'm sorry. We have uh, Dallas and uh, Salem. Mm -hmm very close to Monmouth Independence, obviously, and they both have a job connection office. So our job in marketing is really to promote job connection services and make sure that everyone around those areas is aware of what we can do and how we can help them. So tell us a little more, what is Job Connections program? What, what is that and how does that impact people here? So Job Connection is a free service, free to any, anyone. Our mission statement is to provide vocational opportunities to people, to barriers to employment. And what we mean by that is, that if you come into us and need help, that you've maybe out of the uh, out of the workforce for a little while, maybe you're a mother who's uh, been raising her children and not been working for 15, 20 years. Maybe you don't have those computer skills. Maybe you uh, are having trouble with your English and uh, need to learn some English skills. We will help you with all of that, all free of charge, by coming to one of our ESL classes or by going through specifically through Job Connection where we can help you write your resume, uh, help you prepare you for those interviews and really help you find those resources that you need to actually get that job that you need and get you back into the workforce. And it's all free. And that's amazing. Um, I was not familiar with Job Connection before I got the Chamber job. Yep. And since I have learned a lot more about it, um, obviously you're a Chamber member. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, 
but it really is a great opportunity for people who need a little assistance and the fact that it's free is amazing. Absolutely. So again, we want to thank everyone as we always do whenever we get any media exposure for, for their donations because without those donations, we can't then put the revenue back into those free mission services. So it's all, I call it the goodwill circle of life. It's donations, revenue, all of that feeds back into the mission. And again, the, uh, we have a location um, in Dallas. So for Polk County, it's, it's not a far drive. There's Salem. There, it's easy access. Exactly. And we've got one uh, better for you now that not only do we have those offices in Dallas and in Salem, we also have a roving uh, employment specialist called Holly Thies. And I think our number's going to come up at the end of this little segment today where she will actually come and meet you here in Monmouth, maybe at the library, uh, at the food bank and she will just meet you and start helping you out. Or if you've got the, the means, the transportation, you can go up to the Dallas or Salem office and she can meet you there as well. And Holly's attended some of our chamber functions, so yeah. she's already been um, networking and connecting she's with awesome. people. Yeah, she's really, really a, a fun lady. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit, as far as you, what's been one of your greatest professional accomplishments? Um, I think really, uh, really finding my niche that um, I always knew for some reason that uh, if I had the opportunity to live and work in America, it would be the making of me. And I had two or three different positions back in the UK before we moved over. But I really fell into uh, a job as a, an av advertising executive, uh, an ad, ad agency back in Cincinnati. And I just absolutely fell in love with the role of, of, of doing promotions and helping clients out and, and helping them meet their goals and targets. So I think that's really been my goal for the, uh, uh, since I moved over here, that I've really found my passion for what I do. And I love getting up in the morning and I love, I don't mind every time that phone uh, goes, whether it's a call or whether it's a new email or a text, I'm excited to know what that's going to be and what the next challenge is going to be. And it's, a, and it's been a really good fit with you, I'm assuming, with Goodwill as far as being able to serve the purpose and, and, and instill the mission of Goodwill with your love of, of promotion and marketing. And so it's been a nice marriage, if you oh, will. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, being an ad agency, I think it was somewhat all about money, money, money. Uh, and I feel like the role that, I've been, uh, that I'm in now, I'm actually giving something back. I'm actually promoting and educating people across the Columbia Willamette just about all the length and breadth of services that GICW can, can provide, and, and I absolutely adore that. So what would you say has been one of your greatest personal accomplishments? My greatest personal accomplishment, if we're talking directly about uh, Goodwill Industries of the Columbia Willamette, will absolutely be, so when I joined there a couple of years ago, we did have a Facebook page, uh, but we didn't have many people actually going to that page and mm -hmm. liking it and reading what, uh, what was going on. Uh, over the last 18 months, we have grown that over 800%. We're, we're just under 3,000 Facebook fans now, which is fantastic. And for me, that's so important because it means that people are really understanding the message. And more importantly, we want them to find out what's actually happening in their community. So we're always talking five, six times a day about maybe even what's, what's going on at the store level. Is there a job fair in Salem or Dallas, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we keep growing and growing that all the time. And I know it feeds into my Facebook stream because the does. Chamber of Course is liked Goodwill. Absolutely. And you do you have a lot of um, fun stories, uh, heartwarming stories, just interesting information. Uh, you do a really good job of, of letting people know what's happening with Goodwill. We try to do a really nice mix that we know that the same message won't appeal to everyone. So we try to do, to your point, we will try and do a life story about someone who's seen success coming through one of our programs at Goodwill. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the job fairs and meet the employer events that Holly runs all the time throughout Polk County. Uh, we'll talk about maybe some of the offers or some of the cool things that you can get at the boutiques or the outlets. So there's always something that we can talk about. Now, Goodwill, uh, we do a monthly forum. And um, we had Goodwill present earlier into, well, we're filming this now in the beginning of December, but yep. several months back. And uh, they're talking about some of the different shopping, the, the um, pr uh, secrets, if you will, to even better, better uh, success with shopping in some of the stores. And it was really interesting how many people just sitting at the tables that day during the forum um, like, well, you know, I'm wearing this jacket or this necklace or this whatever that I got from Goodwill or I got um, at this location. And it was really interesting just how much Goodwill had touched the lives of the people just in the room that moment. And then you think about it on a greater scale, it's really impressive what you do. Absolutely, and that's what I love about marketing. It's that opportunity to educate people that through their donation or through that purchase at the store, 
we're able to fund that, fund those mission services, which is what it's all about. Right, and the fact that the Job Connection itself as a program is free, you throw that in, it's just amazing. So, exactly. Um, so this is um, your, your final question, and it's my favorite that I get to ask. What is a hobby or a skill or an interest you have that would maybe surprise people? Probably won't surprise people, but my, if I didn't say this, my wife would go, why didn't you say that? <laughs> that I am an absolute uh, football fanatic. And when I say football, mm -hmm. Americans would like to call <laughs> soccer. Yes. But to me, we invented the sport. It's, uh, it's definitely football. I was a ardent Manchester City supporter and season ticket holder before I moved uh, to the United States and continue to now get up at four o'clock in the morning because of the time difference <laughs> right. and watch them every Saturday and Sunday at the weekends. I am now vicariously living through my son, Alfie, who is nine years old and plays for FC Portland and uh, hoping that he's going to uh, be encouraged to, to play at a high level as well. And if he can get a college scholarship out of it, that would save me a bundle. I'd oh, absolutely. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, that's nice that you like football. Yes. Um, or footy. Uh, had some friends. Thank you. It is footy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had some friends back when I was uh, younger in college who were from England. And it was like, you know, you want to get some play a little footy? Awesome. Okay, that's the best accent I can do with that. So. No, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Dave, thank you so much for joining me today for Chamber Chat. Really you appreciate you being welcome. here. You're welcome. Pleasure. Hi, and welcome back to Chamber Chat. Joining me now is Carol and Franca of Carol and Franca and Associates. Uh, thanks, Carol, for being here. Glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. So now you have a background. You can tell us more. But I know you've got a background in public relations, in marketing. Um, you're originally from Nevada. You've lived here for a while. So my first question is going to be, why here? Why Mammoth Independence? My husband uh, and I came up to his 40-year college reunion uh, back in 2008, and the difference in his breathing was dramatic. I slept through the night. He slept through the night. I wasn't whacking him, telling him to turn over because he was <laughs> gasping for breath. So uh, when we finished the game and all the homecoming stuff, we went to a realtor and uh, you know, started looking around. When we got home, I made him go to the doctor. And it turns out that he was allergic to sagebrush. And we show dogs. We have a lot of dogs. We live out of town. And we lived on a little more than an acre of sagebrush, surrounded by, I think, 180,000 acres of Bureau of Land Management sagebrush. So we decided we would move. Uh, he was about to retire from teaching. And I had my own business, so I could work anywhere. So we decided to uh, come back at. Uh, uh, Christmas break and look at houses and there was an ice storm then and our realtor called and said you know don't come we were going to drive up and so we ended up flying up and uh, we looked at several houses and uh, because of the dogs we always live out of town mm -hmm. so as to not be a burden to our neighbors <laughs> with the terriers uh, and we found a house and it was so perfect and so out of our price range that uh, we only spent four minutes in it before we left because there's no way we could afford it. And uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 days later, a month later, we got a call from the realtor saying the price had dropped on the house, uh, nearly $100,000. Wow. We bought it. Wow. And I had never even seen the bathrooms. <laughs> That's how perfect the house was because it was all tile and wood for the the dogs and we could just close the bedroom doors and the dogs could have run of the house and we're all about decorating for dogs so uh, we were cool so that's how Monmouth found us we looked in Philomath and uh, uh, outside of Corvallis and other towns around but none of the houses were as perfect as uh, Monmouth and when we came in to town uh, I remember the first thing I said was, aw, it was so cute. <laughs> Coming from Los Angeles and then Nevada, it was a big change. So uh, that's how we got here. So that you're an Oregonian. You've been here for several years. You've um, brought your business here, obviously. Tell us a little bit more about what Carolyn Franca and Associates is. What do you do? I do marketing and public relations for mainly small businesses and some nonprofits. I I had some huge clients when I was in Nevada because I was a former television news reporter and newspaper reporter and I could 
I was really plugged in. I mean, I knew everybody. And uh, I also knew what was going to work and what wasn't because I had 17 years experience on the other side of trying to get that information out. Uh, so when I moved here, I didn't know anybody. So I ended up getting, I thought I was going to retire. Uh, and I started getting some little bitty clients, and I still had one major client. I still do in Nevada. They produce motorcycle events all over the United States. And I'm such the biker chick, a grandmother writing these releases. <laughs> uh, but it works for me, and it works for them. So uh, I, I do newsletters for them. I do press releases. I do whatever it is they need. If they need advertising, I'll buy advertising for them. And I m maintain a lot of uh, Facebook pages and do social media for some of my clients. So it really is a lot of fun. In fact, I love what I, I do. And if I were independently wealthy, I would do what I do for free because I really like that glow on somebody's face when something we do that seems really out of the box really works and they get results. And that's what it's all about. So now uh, we, through the Chamber, we do a pep talk series, our educational outreach. And just this week, we're filming this in early December, and just this week you were kind of to be a presenter. You did um, some marketing strategies. It was a, a quicker workshop. We only had an hour. Um, but you were very uh, efficient with your time in giving people some great marketing <laughs> outreach. Right through that. <laughs> so it was great, though, with those different strategies that people can do, and you can pick and choose what would work best for you. But I know um, more so lately you've been doing a lot through Constant Contact as one of their expert um, providers, yes. if you will. I'm and an authorized local expert. Yes. And I'm on my way to being a master certified uh, authorized local expert. And I teach classes and they're free. All of the classes are free and I do them I do them all over uh, from I've done them from Seattle to Eugene so far and I have some coming up in Silverton and I go around. So uh, if you have a group and you'd like a presentation, my presentations are always free, but I do them at least once a month at the Independence Library. Those classes are free and they're everything from social media marketing from the what's it, what are all those channels to your social now what, what's the next step, right. and uh, different types of things to help the small business and nonprofit uh, do their own marketing with a, a, a simple set of tools. And you've done a really good job of keeping your classes um, listed through the Chamber's calendar page. Right. And you also will do the, um, a, a news announcement. So you, you double hit people with it, which is smart. Um, so if people want to know what you have coming up you know, in future months, feel free to check out the Chamber's website, obviously, because you do a good job keeping those posted. What would you say has been one of your greatest professional accomplishments? You know, to go way back in my career, I was a uh, newspaper reporter. In, and my beat was in <clears throat> North Hollywood, and I had the uh, I had the studios, uh, Universal and the Burbank Studios and whatnot. So before I would go into the newspaper office, I would go through the uh, uh, crime reports at the police stations, and I began to see a series of rapes. My newspaper had never even used that term in a headline. This was back in the 70s, and they were a little shocked that I wanted to do a series on this. Uh, but I convinced them, and I did. I talked to legislators. I went to prisons and talked to uh, the, the rapists. I talked to victims. I talked to various police agencies, psychologists, psychoanalysts. I did all kinds of things. I wrote a seven-part series in my little bitty newspaper the Burbank Daily Review uh, in Southern California, and it won uh, the State of California's Ad Administration of Justice Award. That series was used as resource material. Every legislator in the state got a copy of it because it really explained uh, what was involved in, in an attack of that kind. And it was used as resource material while they considered changes in the state's 100-year-old rape laws. And after that law was changed, prior sexual conduct of a woman was no longer admissible in a rape trial. And I was really thrilled to do that. It also played a big role in my career because, because of that award and the all the notoriety I got, uh, and I was flown up to, to the state bar to get the award at a huge luncheon, I started getting calls from 
various television stations interviewing me, a reporter, on how I went about doing that. And as I started doing those, I started thinking, hmm, <laughs> I could do this. Uh, and about the same time there was unrest in Los Angeles, I ended up covering some riots, got stuck behind some bushes with uh, television news reporters from the NBC affiliate, which is there in Burbank, and uh, we got to be really good friends, hiding behind a bush, getting tear gassed, <laughs> really, really has a bond. Uh, so I would go to the TV station when I was finished at the newspaper, about the time crews were coming back, so I learned how to edit film, uh, and I already knew reporting. Mm -hmm. But I had a different take on it because I could, uh, I could, to have somebody back in the day that knew both TV right. and newspapers, I was a really strange duck. So what started with your series that was award winning and in its own self had a lot of impact, right. then leads to some other connections, which leads to other connections. And it's just really interesting how the whole networking and what one thing you do can lead to something else. That's that's really interesting. And right. now all of a sudden you're on TV and you're editing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was pretty wild. And then uh, in Nevada, I, I can remember the very day that I decided that uh, I didn't want to be a reporter anymore. It was really cold, really cold. It's been really cold around here, but I'm talking really right. cold. And the station I work for, we had bald tires on the news cars. And we went to a, uh, uh, there was a traffic accident in uh, on a particularly icy stretch of the road, and we went to that, and it was just, it was horrible. There were head injuries, and Oof. blood squirts out like a fountain when there, it was just really gross, and we were barely holding our cookies when there was a fire on Geiger Grade, clear on the other end of town, and we're racing there. Because there was paint in the garage, we had to park far away, so I'm carrying 50 pounds of camera gear while my done. Camera, <laughs> cameraman is going on. And when we got to that fire, I didn't want him to put it out. I wanted to get warm, and I thought, well, I'm, right. I'm done. <laughs> I had to buy some suits and right. go do, you know, yeah. switch into PR, so I did. And here you are. So real quick, because um, we're almost out of time, my favorite question, what is something, a hobby, a skill, or interest that you have that would surprise people? Well, I don't think it would really surprise people because I tell people about my dogs. Right. So I'm going to be going to Westminster in February. I'm thrilled. I have three of my dogs that my husband and I bred that are in the top ten, and I never dreamed that that would be possible. So, <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, congratulations on your success from starting with the newspaper to working to the TV and now saying, you know what, we like Oregon, we want to live here, and doing the PR work that you're doing to help support our local businesses and our organizations. So thank you for all that, and thank you for being here. Thank you.